Hello, I'm Mark Galliotti. I'm director of the consultancy Mayak Intelligence and the person behind the In Moscow Shadows podcast. And although I really ought to have better things to do on the evening of Sunday, the 12th of May, nonetheless, the news that there is a new defence minister in Russia is one that I couldn't really pass up. So what we have heard is that Sergei Shoigu is no longer Minister of Defence, that he's being replaced by Andrei Balabusov, and he's moving to become Secretary of the Security Council, replacing Nikolai Patrushev, who apparently has another job, but at the moment we've not been told what. So, just some quick first re reactions to it. And remember, this is still a very fluid, fluid situation, so who knows what may be. First of all, about Belousov getting the Defence Ministry job. Now, Belousov, Deputy Prime Minister, an economist, very much, uh, you know, capable but essentially statist figure. And it might seem strange for a person with no real military experience to become Minister of Defence, especially during a time of war. But it's not as odd as all that. First of all, I mean, let's face it, in, in, in most Western countries, a Minister of Defence probably doesn't have real military experience. More to the point, the way things work in Russia is that in peacetime, the Minister of Defence is the key position and the Chief of the General Staff, the top soldier, essentially is there to do what, what the Minister says. However, in time of war, and yeah, OK, it turns out also in time of special military operation, in some ways the structure gets reversed. The Chief of the General Staff is in many ways the key person who re reports directly to the Commander-in-Chief, in other words, Putin, and the minister is really there just to ensure that the military have what they need. And in that context, actually having an economist, someone who has been speaking about the need to basically subordinate much of the economy to the needs of the defence sector, actually makes a certain amount of sense. You know, it is now essentially a financial administrator's job, and Belousov can do that. What will be interesting to see is whether or not this will also mean a new chief of the general staff. Typically, when a new defence minister comes in, we get a new chief of the general staff. Given that Gerasimov, the current incumbent of that position, has proven to be a pretty awful chief of the general staff, in wartime at least, unimaginative, prone to truly wasteful operations, and perhaps most importantly of all, absolutely unwilling to actually tell the Commander-in-Chief to tell Putin some of the realities of war. In those circumstances, to be honest, the Ukrainians must be hoping that he stays. But I wouldn't be surprised if we actually do see, particularly once Belousov has got his feet under the desk, a new Chief of the General Staff as well. So this, I mean, it, it's an unexpected choice. I mean, it's interesting, Belousov was in not in any way one of the names that were being floated. But nonetheless, there is a certain sense to it. Shoigu going. That's much more interesting. I mean, I must admit that the point at which his deputy defence minister and, and frankly crony and wallet of his corrupt businesses, general, uh, sorry, minister, Timur Ivanov was arrested and charged with corruption with a hint of treason being in the wings. There was a sense that, that Shoigu's position was, was, was much less tenable. But again, here's the key thing. Shoigu is not only a deeply experienced and wily political operator, he's also a personal friend of Putin's. And amongst many horrible things that one can absolutely rightfully say about Putin, one of the kind of positive things is that he is loyal to his own. If he genuinely, you know, if you're one of his friends and you haven't actually betrayed him, he will look after you. So my suspicion was that Shoigu would be given some kind of honorific rustific, rustication post. For example, presidential plenipotentiary to the Siberian Federal District, going back to his roots, or maybe going up to the Senate or similar. Moving him to the Security Council is an interesting position, because up to now... It's been held by, well, for years now, by Nikolai Patrushev. Now, Nikolai Patrushev going is something I can wholeheartedly applaud. I called him the most dangerous man in Russia, and I think that's true. This is a man who, on the one hand, had built his position to, in effect, not be what it used to be, which is essentially a very uh, minor bureaucratic role, but actually to become something like a hybrid of national security advisor 
and Director of National Intelligence. Two positions which don't exist in the Russian system and frankly ought to be kept very far apart because in many ways the National Security Advisor is there as the person who advises the President independently and in some ways is the fact checker for what is coming from the intelligence community. By having the two of them informally brought together in, in Patrushev's hands, I think it was a very, very dangerous position. It exacerbated an existing trend of essentially insulating Putin from unpleasant realities and just simply telling him what he wants to hear. Now, do I think that Shoigu moving into this position is going to dramatically change things? I don't think so. I mean, obviously, a lot of the power that was in that position was Patrushev's power. Patrushev was not just an ex-KGB veteran, but someone whom Putin trusted, and someone who had sort of built that position as being, in some ways, the main person who paints a picture of the outside world to the boss. Shoigu won't be in quite such a strong institutional position, especially because he doesn't have the same ties with the largest of all the agencies, the Federal Security Service, beforehand. Though, obviously, he does have a certain relationship with GU, military intelligence. But that said... You can't just institutionally turn around a bureaucracy and how it works overnight. Even if Shoigu is not going to be in the same sort of position as Patrushev, even if he doesn't want to be in the same position as, as Patrushev, nonetheless, for so long now, pretty much everything security related, in terms of documentation, briefings and so forth, that is meant to be potentially for Putin's desk, goes through the Security Council Secretariat. It's one of the key things. I mean, you know... It's not quite yes minister or yes prime minister, but the degree to which clearly we had a situation in which Putin was frankly dependent on the secretariat for the kind of information and briefings that he needed had really become quite, quite important. So, you know, I think actually Patrushev going will not make the Security Council secretariat. Because remember, it's the secretariat, not the Security Council as a whole, that is important. It won't change it overnight. It may begin to shift. Does it mean it'll change policy? Not really. Again, I, I mean, there, there's pretty convincing evidence to suggest that Shoigu was at best half-hearted about the full-scale invasion of February 2022, just as he had actually been quite opposed to the annexation of Crimea back in 2014. I don't think that makes him a dove. I just think it makes him a little bit more cautious. But anyway, he, he didn't ultimately stand against it or whatever. And I think likewise, we're not going to see Shoigu trying to convince Putin to make peace or anything like that. But the thing about Patrushev was not just simply that he echoed Putin's prejudices and paranoias back to him. It's that actually he actively exacerbated them. I mean, this is a man, remember, who, if one goes back to his often deeply disturbing newspaper interviews and, and public, occasional public addresses. You know, this is a man who clearly believed in a lot of the worst and most barking mad conspiracy theories about the West, how it was conspiratorial, opposed to Russia, wanted not just to constrain Russia, but actually break the Federation apart. So I think the point was actually Pavlchev made things worse. Shoigu, I suspect, is not going to necessarily make things better, but will not make things worse. The smallest of mercies, but nonetheless a mercy. So it will be interesting to see how that develops. And as I say, in many ways, this is Shoigu going back to what he's good at. Shoigu is good at behind-the-scenes politics. And this is very much a behind-the-scenes politics role. So it's interesting that you know, Putin has, has looked after his guy. But Patrushev is one of his guys, too. What's going to happen to him? Again, this is the, the big unknown. I've been kind of racking my brains for quite what position he could have, because we already know that the, ex the existing prime minister, Mishustin, has been picked to be the next prime minister. That would have otherwise been an obvious and, again, frankly, very alarming place to, to put the 72-year-old Patrushev. Beyond that, head of the presidential administration overall, that's actually, I don't think in some ways is, is that important a position. Uh, maybe he could replace the current uh, foreign policy advisor to the president, um, which is uh, Yuri Ushakov, who is, I think by memory, 77. Um, but again, that is a much more peripheral role. Otherwise, we could see some kind of you know, punt up to the Senate, which is basically a kind of honorific way of saying, you know, there you go. It's a sort of glorified retirement in that respect. 
So at the moment, I, I can't actually see, shall I say, a Patrushev shaped hole. It may well be that Putin plans to dig one. Um, as there's, there's visions of, of, of graves, but uh, I don't think it's going to be that. No, I mean, it may well be that he, he plans to create some sort of space. He certainly seems to have become quite dependent on Patrushev. So it's a question of whether or not he, he can emancipate himself from, from this ultra hawk. But at present, that I think is something that it's going to be really interesting to see. And I can't help but wonder, because Patrushev's son, Dmitry Patrushev, the current... I wouldn't say high, I wouldn't say low achieving, middle achieving agriculture minister, has just been elevated to the position of deputy prime minister, essentially still in charge of agriculture. So it's more like a kind of uh, title bump rather than a particular expansion of responsibilities. But some people were presenting that as sign of the Patrushev dynasty and such like There's all sorts of overheated talk about him becoming prime minister and the like. But I can't help but wonder if, in fact, the elevation of Dmitry Patrushev is also a sop to his dad. And more or less says, look, sorry, we're going to have to move you a little bit away from the centre of politics. But hey, your boy's going to be all right. We'll all have to wait and see. This is this is an interesting time. Uh, well, certainly it is for, for kind of you know, Russia policy wonks like myself. So we'll, we'll have to, to watch. This is very, very much, as I say, a, a kind of a first snap response and will no doubt be proven wrong in all sorts of different ways in, in the coming future. But at least I thought I'd, I'd put it out there so people can tell just how wrong I turn out to be. Thanks very much for your attention.